In this video, we're gonna talk about the differences between SRAM and Shimano mountain bike components. I've been using both of these for over 25 years and they both have their pros and cons. If anybody tells you Shimano's the best and SRAM sucks or vice versa, it's not really true. They're both good systems and they have their advantages and disadvantages. Now, usually when you buy a bike, you'll find one based on a brand you like and then a price range that fits your budget and you're stuck with either SRAM or Shimano. There are times when you have the option of choosing one or the other, but later on, you're gonna be able to upgrade your bike and hopefully this video will help you decide which one of these systems is right for you. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the drivetrain and the brakes. And I'll say that the brakes are where they vary the most, but let's start with the drivetrain. I'll start with the shifter. So this is a SRAM 12-speed mechanical shifter. For the mechanical shifting, they've always had a push-push system. So you push with your thumb on this lever to go to an easier gear, and you push on this button to go to a harder gear. And it's very crisp, it shifts really well. Now, SRAM, is, in my opinion, more innovative than Shimano. At least they push things to the market faster. Case in point is their electronic shifting. So SRAM has completely wireless electronic shifting, whereas Shimano has electronic shifting, but it's kind of getting dated, and Shimano shifting still is not completely wireless. I have a feeling we'll see some wireless Shimano shifting coming up in the future, but for now, SRAM is ruling the market with wireless. I will say that I like mechanical. I like the fact that once I get it set up, I don't have to charge a battery, but that's just a personal opinion. But the shifter on SRAM, like I said, push, push for the mechanical. Looking at the Shimano mechanical shifter, you have a push, push system. So again, this lever goes to an easier gear, this lever goes to a harder gear, but it's nice that you also have the option to use a finger, a trigger to go to a harder gear. So you can push here for an easier gear, pull here for a harder gear. Now, I don't think every single Shimano level has that trigger system, but a lot of them do, and it's nice to have that option. I typically just do push-push with the thumb just because I switch back and forth, and I don't want to try to get used to using a finger for going into a harder gear, but again, it's nice that you have that option on the Shimano shifter. Now looking at the rear derailleur and the cassette, I mentioned earlier that SRAM seems to be a bit more innovative and push things to the market faster. SRAM had 12 speed on their mountain bike group set two or three years before Shimano came out with 12 speed. Now, fortunately, they both are 12 speed today, but that's just another example of how SRAM pushes things to the market faster. So the rear derailleur, they both work pretty much the same, but one thing I really like about the SRAM is that you can push the cage forward and lock it and that makes taking a rear wheel off so much easier. And Shimano has a release on their clutch, which I'll show you in a minute, uh, but it's not near as easy to get the rear wheel off. This completely takes the tension out of the chain and again, makes working on your bike a lot easier. And then to release it, you just push it forward and let it go. In terms of shifting performance, they both perform about the same, but there is one super annoying thing about SRAM cassettes, rear derailleurs. I don't know where the problem is, but in it's about the cog that's maybe about three or four or five up. And it's always like the bike is trying to, to shift out of that gear. It just kind of has a, a little ticking noise and I cannot tune it out. And it's happened on just about every SRAM drivetrain. I'm talking like probably five to 10 drivetrains that I've had with SRAM and they all have that issue. This bike is no exception. Shimano, I've never had that issue. Looking at the Shimano rear derailleur and the cassette. Again, this is a 12-speed cassette now, finally. And this is the clutch release on the Shimano rear derailleur. So in this position, the cage has a lot more tension on it and that reduces chain slap. When you need to take the rear wheel off, you can push this forward, which takes some tension out, but there still is tension on it and it's more difficult to get the rear wheel, particularly on the bike. I mean, it's not too hard to get it off, but when you, it's time to put the rear wheel back on, uh, you still got some tension on the cage and it's more difficult. But like I said, other than that annoying little ticking issue that I get in one of the cogs on the SRAM, they both shift about the same in terms of shifting speed. Another advantage of the SRAM cassette is that you can get a 10 to a 52. So it used to be a 51. Now it goes up to a 52. And as far as I know, for Shimano, you can only get a 10 to 51. 
Not a huge deal, but you do get a bit lower gearing on a SRAM cassette. And just in case you are new to mountain biking or have been out of it for a very long time, pretty much every drivetrain now does not come with a front derailleur for mountain biking. So that's why you have this huge range of a cassette going from a 10 all the way up to a 52. That does simplify the drivetrain and it's got these narrower wide, both Shimano and SRAM have this, a narrower wide front chain ring which holds the chain onto the chain ring without having to use a front derailleur or a chain guide. It works really well and it's extremely rare that you will drop a chain off the front chain ring. Now we're gonna talk about the brakes and this is where SRAM and Shimano vary the most. First of all, SRAM uses DOT fluid in their braking systems. The advantage of DOT fluid is that it dissipates heat better, so you don't have brake fade. And brake fade means when the brake systems really heat up on a long downhill, the brake fluid can heat up and it reduces the performance because it makes the pads hot. Now, DOT fluid is corrosive and it is toxic, and I hate working with it because you've gotta be super careful. If you get it on paint, it can basically peel off the paint uh, you don't want to touch it with your fingers. You always want to use gloves. I personally would rather use the mineral oil that Shimano uses. Now, I do think one day SRAM is probably going to have systems with mineral oil. There's just so many advantages to working with mineral oil for the ones that I listed. Now, the, the disadvantage of the mineral oil is the fact that it can heat up more. And what Shimano does in a lot of their systems is they put these fins on the brake pads and the fins cool the brake pads. So if you're on a long downhill and the fluid heats up and heats up the brake pads, the brake pads will cool off. Now the disadvantage to that is that those fins can rattle around. So you're gonna have a noisier bike with Shimano brakes, just the way it is right now. Uh, it, you get used to it, but you, you will hear those brake pads rattling around, especially when there's a lot of chatter, you're on a rough downhill. Uh, it, it is what it is, but I like the fact that I can get mineral oil on my hands, it's not toxic. I can get it on the bike. All I have to do is wipe it off. I don't have to worry about it, uh, you know, messing up the paint of the bike. Braking performance also differs between the two. So Shimano brakes have a really strong initial bite and it takes less effort to initiate your braking. So when you're on a trail and you need to just feather the brakes, uh, you got to be careful with Shimano because you can grab a little bit too much too easily. Now, because I switch back and forth between these systems, I have to be careful because when I go from SRAM to Shimano, I can lock up the rear wheel pretty easily on Shimano if I'm not kind of thinking about it. You get used to it after about 10 minutes on a ride. Whereas SRAM has better modulation. In other words, you can feather the brakes easier. There's a, a less of an initial bite, initial grab when you brake. Uh, but it's it's easier to modulate your power. So you can do a little bit of power, more power. Now the disadvantage is it does take more effort to squeeze a SRAM brake lever. Uh, again, it's not huge, but there is a difference. Another advantage that I found with Shimano is braking performance is more consistent across their lines. So like a Dior versus an XTR, which is very expensive. It's lighter, but it's more expensive the performance will be about the same. Whereas SRAM, I've noticed that, you know, like a guide brake versus a code brake, the codes work so much better. And so if you get varying price levels of SRAM, I found that you get varying performance. Shimano is just more consistent. So those are the major differences between these two systems. Personally, I don't heavily favor one or the other, but if I have a choice, I choose Shimano just because I like the braking performance and the fact the brakes don't use DOT fluid. I also can't stand that little annoying issue with SRAM where it's trying to shift out of that, just the one cog. I don't know why they haven't fixed that yet, but it's pretty annoying. And one day I hope SRAM will fix that. Now, both of these systems are really good. So as I said at the beginning of the video, if you buy a bike based on a brand and a price range, don't really sweat it if it comes with one or the other, but if you ever have the choice of one of these systems, then I hope this video has helped you out. What about you? What system do you use? Drop that in the comments below. I'm sure we'll get a lot of opinions. And if you have any other questions or comments, drop those below as well. Thanks for watching.